the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And good morning, everyone. You're welcome here to Mass on this first Sunday of Advent. And on this first Sunday, we say a little prayer for the beginning of Advent and bless our candles. This is what we have heard from God and are declaring to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in God at all. If we say that we share in God's life while we are living in darkness, we are lying, because God is light, and we live the truth. But if we live in light, and he is in light, we have a share in one another's life, and in the blood of Jesus his Son, who cleanses us from all sin. And so to remind us of the Advent season, we bless this Advent wreath and candle, and may the light of Christ remain always in our hearts. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Today's intention for the Mass is for the people of the parish, so we remember all God's people, we remember those who have gone before us, those who brought faith to us. Maybe for the times when we haven't lived in faith, we pause now and ask for God's pardon and God's peace. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. You call us to walk in the light of your truth. Christ, have mercy. You call us to stand ready for your coming to us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself our Father. Our Redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us to stray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down at your presence, the mountains would melt. No ear has heard, no eye has seen any God but you act like this for those who you trust in. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men unclean. All that integrity of ours like filthy clothes. We have all withered like leaves and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one invoked us your name, or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us, and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our Father. We the clay, you the potter, we are the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. <laughs> the responsorial psalm, the response. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cherubim throne. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. 
Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. God, God of hosts, bring us back. Let your faith shine on us, and we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God, God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. You now stand for the gospel. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus says to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay away, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay away. So stay away, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cock, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to you all, stay away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, good morning, everyone. I introduced myself last week just in case you haven't met me. My name is Father Kieran Brady, a Redemptorist priest. I used to be based in a place called uh, St. Pat's in the Cowgate. You know where that is, do you? St. Patrick's right in the centre of town. And I also was based then in our house, our Redemptorist house in Perth in, uh, in Canool. These days I live down in Birmingham uh, in our big abbey there. I hope I haven't picked up the Birmingham accent, have I? You can understand me all right, Jess? <laughs> I gave parish missions and retreats, and I gave a little mission here uh, last year or the year before, a few days, uh, and I was involved in the school. It's also good to see some of the young people here today as well. And you know, the one thing I remember from Trenent from last year, do you want me to tell you what it is? The one thing I remember is that you're all very intelligent people, aren't you? <laughs> all very intelligent people. And some of you may occasionally read, or you might remember writers, and there's an old writer called Tennessee Williams, who used to write many things. And Tennessee Williams, he was an American writer, towards the end of his life, he was on his deathbed, and he decided to do what a lot of people do on their deathbed, he converted to Catholicism. And do you know what happened to him? He got well again, he wasn't planning on that, was he? So he ended up having to go to Mass and live out the rest of his life as a Catholic. And he used to write many things, but he was writing a reflection about when he was a wee boy, about the age of some of the children here. And he tells a little story of his father, who worked as a telephone engineer, going away to fix the cables across America. And he said he used to watch his father come and go and fix those long cables across America until one day his father went away and he never came back and everyone was very sad but you know in the house there was a little ironic joke they used to say that his father had fallen in love with long distance because he was on those telephone cables a long distance father who didn't come back and today at the beginning of Advent we light that little candle as a reminder that we don't believe in a God or Father of long distance, but we believe in a God that comes to us as a child, who comes to us and says that he will be with us. And we begin that journey towards that child today through Advent. What do you do when you think you've lost somebody? What do you do when someone has gone away or maybe our hope has diminished or maybe we've had a hard time sounds a wee bit like 2020 doesn't it well what we do is 
what the people of the Old Testament did in that first reading. They were remembering, remembering what God has done for all of us. And they remembered that long ago we had a God who was called the Redeemer, somebody who changed our world, somebody who brought us hope. During this season of Advent, our Mass is all about remembering. The whole of Mass is actually a remembrance and thanksgiving of what God has done for each and every one of us. As we remember our faith during this time of Advent, hopefully we can remember what we're called to do. I know that uh, a Redemptorist priest can go on a bit, so I'm nearly finished, okay? One minute. I remember one of our confreres, one of our priests, was preaching a wee bit long one day, and he was going on and on, and one of the ladies in the front row started to fall asleep. But he just decided to keep going, and he was going on and on, and the lady sort of leant against the person next to her and started snoring. And so he had to stop and he said to the man next to her, will you ever wake her up? And the man thought about it for a moment and he said, that would be unfair, Father, you put her to sleep so you wake her up. <laughs> we go through our lives sometimes half awake or maybe we just do things by habit during this time of Advent. Be alert, be awake. That's what it says in our readings. Be awake to the possibilities in our life. Be awake to the fact that when we look at this light, we remind ourselves that we don't have a God of long distance, but a God that comes to us as a little child. A God who can be with us at Christmas. And as we reflect and refresh our faith during this month of reflection, let's not waste Advent by running around trying to buy things or wondering how many people we're going to invite to our Christmas dinner. During Advent, let's reflect on a God who comes to us, not from long distance, but comes to us as a child and says that he will be with us always. And if we can reflect on that faith, then maybe we can also reflect that we're called to reach out to others who are broken who can't quite see that light at the moment. Let's remember that God calls us to be awake. Let's hope we haven't put anyone to sleep this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to stand as we bring our prayers to our God of light? Because we believe in God, and we believe that God will come to our help, we present our prayers. That this Advent may prepare us to meet Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may stay safe as we get ready for Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That there may be peace in our world and in our homes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That homeless families may find shelter. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That older people may not feel anxious. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That people who are sick with COVID-19 may get better. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the members of this community who have died, God's light may shine on them and on all we have lost. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for the people of the parish. We pray for all our intentions as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So if you'd like to take a seat, please, just a couple of notices. Uh, for today. Do take your newsletter away with you. Uh, the first thing to note is there's an extra Mass on here in Trinent this week on Monday, where there isn't usually a Mass. Monday is the Feast of St. Andrew, uh, so there will be a special Mass 
at 10 o'clock if you are around and want to come to St Andrew's Mass at 10 o'clock on Monday. Your newsletter tells you everything you need to know about both parishes. We are continuing to organise our Christmas Masses. Do sign up for them. Uh, I know a lot of the Masses are getting full uh, or are already full. Uh, however, I know I think that the Christmas Day uh, morning Masses, there are still spaces there. Um, you might be struggling for the Christmas Eve Masses at the moment, but certainly the Christmas Day Masses are full. If you have already signed up, uh, then uh, you should receive a card and a little ticket, uh, and you may receive that today. You'll also receive a little envelope for our Christmas offerings. All I would say is, uh, if you are coming to the Christmas Mass, bring that wee envelope back, will you? And make sure you put something in it, okay? And I hope you have a good week. So pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which he, we now dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Leo our Bishop, and all priests, deacons, religious, and all who reach out to God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so now, at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the Kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your Apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. St. Alphonsus wrote a wonderful prayer of spiritual communion, and to those joining us online, we join with you as we receive communion together in our hearts, and we do that by uh, joining in this prayer, hopefully at home of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come in me spiritually into my heart. And although you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. And may the Lord bless you. May God bless you as you come forward to receive the Lord in this Holy Communion. And as you go forth from this place, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on you and all those whom you love. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'll see you next weekend. I might also see some of you on Monday uh, for uh, Mass for St. Andrew. Then I'll be away for a few days because of uh, my orders business, uh, but I'll be back before next, well, no, I won't see you next weekend. Uh, Deacon Gordon will take the services. I'll be back into the following week. Have a good week. <laughs>